Steve, in your book, True Legends, you talk about a Smithsonian cover-up whenever giant bones are involved. So I want to ask you the question that everybody always asks. Where are all the giant bones? It's interesting, Tim, because of the bias of the Smithsonian and their contempt for out-of-place artifacts. Every time giants were found, it didn't matter if it was on the West Coast, the Arctic, the Antarctic, believe it or not, the East Coast, the Ohio River Mounds, they always have a fabulous cutoff point, meaning once the Smithsonian is notified and those bones are sent to the Smithsonian, they're never heard from again. And there's denials. A good example of that, it was a famous Kincaid expedition in the Grand Canyon where they found the Egyptian citadel. Even the Phoenix Gazette carried that story. So, Tim, the cover-up has always been to keep this biblically relevant topic out of the minds of the people so at an appropriate time in the future they can claim whatever they want to claim and they'll claim anything and everything apart from the true biblical origin of giants. So Steve, even during World War II there were reports of giants and cannibalism coming out of the Solomon Islands. What was that all about? After World War II, people couldn't reconcile the fact that a lot of servicemen, U.S. servicemen, had been eaten, cannibalized, as well as Japanese. And the fascinating investigation I've come up with was the fact that the Solomon Islands are riddled with stories of cannibalistic giants and even living giants to this day. I was contacted by a, a, a man named Marius who was literally going to meet me in California with, uh, let's just say this, irrefutable evidence. But he said to me on the phone, he said, Steve, I'm being followed, and I'm not sure I'll even make it there alive. What has to be asked, the question that needs to be asked and has to be asked, is that why do people who have the evidence, why are they intimidated? Why are they threatened? Why are they disappeared? What is this cover-up? And I'll tell you the bottom line, they do not want people to understand that the sons of God, the fallen angels, saw that the daughters of earth were fair, mated with them, and produced a literally new race of hybrid beings that the Bible calls the Rephaim. And the Rephaim are with us today. They're genetic traits, they're genetic markers. And when we get into super soldiers, Tim, the super soldiers, the most uh, important expenditures made are to identify not only the bloodline, but the genetic traits. There are people literally not only wanting to bring the giants back, but to insert giant genes in our soldiers to give them the super soldier ability. More money is being spent to identify genetic traces and markers, the actual gene prints of giants, both dead and extractable DNA from their teeth, from whatever cells in the mummies, to literally living giants today. So in other words, what you're saying is somebody's trying to weaponize giant genes. Absolutely. And the super soldier program is probably one of the most almost unbelievable, yet so believable programs that the U.S. military is involved in. And all the underground labs, all the secret places around the planet, everybody's after the same thing. They want comic book heroes that we would only laugh about and have laughed about maybe for 50 years and now it's it's no longer fantasy it's fact and we're not just talking about superhuman strength are we we're also talking about superhuman cerebral capabilities that the giants had absolutely uh, speaking of, of cerebral capabilities the giants even when they're in a stasis state that means in suspended animation whether it's dr ernest Muldashev in russia uh, in the mountains of Tibet, whether it's a whole underground base in which some of these entities, these living giants are present, they have so much cerebral energy that they, they actually have what's called the red line. And you can't go past that. Or literally, they claim, according to special operations, four-star generals, that literally it, it causes a person to almost come apart at the seams. It not only drives people mad, but it literally just causes them to go to pieces. You understand that's the ultimate weapon. You know, uh, Michael Crichton with Jurassic Park brought us dinosaurs and now we're hearing about woolly mammoths being cloned and, and we're hearing all these new stories that Neanderthal is no longer uh, a member of our family tree, which I've said for 30 years, but the point being is, is that it's all about weapons. And as a general said to me in special operations, 
doesn't matter if it's ancient technology, doesn't matter if it's ancient genetics, those of us are either fighting to keep it out of the hands of the wrong people, or the wrong people are fighting us to kill us to get it into their hands. There's a war going on, and it's no longer just dusty old bones in a museum stuck away. So Steve, according to Genesis 6, fallen angels had sexual relations with human women, creating these hybrid half-angel, half-human giants. In a weaponized, military weaponized sense, what other capabilities might these super soldiers have if they have the genes of giants? Well, beyond the obvious of strength, beyond the obvious of almost supervision, super hearing, one of the most remarkable things from my four-star general friend was basically said they hunt by DNA. Every person's DNA has a specific harmonic that they could identify a specific uh, target's DNA and assign a Fido, the 19-foot uh, giant, to go after. And, and it was interesting because when you think about it, even going back to Jack the Giant Killer and Jack be nimble, Jack be quick, as I've been researching all these, remember the statement? Fee, fi, fo, fum, I smell the blood of an Englishman. You go to the Bible and whose blood cried out? Righteous, able blood cried out to the living God after Cain slew him. So the harmonics of blood is fascinating. That's why the cry of the innocent blood is such a, a, a big deal in God's eyes, and it truly is, because the blood has a signal, a frequency, and there have been studies to prove that. So they want the giants to be able to basically target specific DNA characteristics, not to mention the bottom line, and you know how much I love to say that, these entities want every last human being destroyed, and in its place, a hybrid. They're going to try and prove that God's a liar. Jesus himself said, if the days weren't shortened, there'd be no flesh left alive, yet for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. You've turned down opportunities to work with some of the major networks on documentaries concerning giants. Why have you decided not to work with them? And furthermore, why have you decided to start your own production company, Gen 6 Productions? Tim, it's just simply this. I believe the big lie that's going to be placed, hoist upon the world is that the aliens created mankind, which I categorically reject. It's funny. The people that will accept the fact that the Anunnaki star creatures came to this planet will avoid fallen angels like a plague. I wanted the correct, in my opinion, after 40 years of research, I wanted the correct historic and biblical presentation of the giants. And quite candidly, when I talk to some of them, if I start talking about fallen angels having sex with earth women, they snicker. Well, that snicker tells me they've already made up their mind. And I said, I will only appear on camera if I can have final edit of what I say. Guess what? Nobody want to do that. That tells me there's agenda. So I believe it's this is a time that that you and I are going to basically go out and say to the world, okay, here's what those guys are saying, but here's not only what the Bible says, and here's how accurate the Bible is with the history that follows. Gen 6 Productions is totally different than everything else that's on the TV, everything else that's on the documentary. Everybody's looking in a rear view mirror at history, just trying to find the bones and find the original documents of, of all of the different finds and I've spent 20 years doing that already. But we're taking people, to him simply where no one else has ever gone before. They're starting from the premise that all the giants are gone. We're starting from the premise that there are modern day giants now who aren't suffering from acromegaly or some pituitary disorder, but they're literally going to fulfill the biblical statement of Matthew 24, where Jesus said, just as in the days of Noah, so would it be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. Most people do not understand the evil. Most people can't even embrace the fact that this isn't about old bones. This is about a contemporary threat beyond any science fiction twisting of the facts. And that's why we're going to, I believe the best antidote, that's why we're going to do this thing, Gen 6 Productions. We're going to present information. We're going to present eyewitness testimony. Again, we're not just dealing with bones. Obviously, we'll follow the leads of bones. But we're going to show the people out there what the truth is and why this cover-up has been a multi-thousand-year cover-up. 
and what the expectation that everyone is going to, uh, not only the expectation, but what is going to be presented to the people as the gods who made us. And I got to share this, when I did write the book True Legends, Genesis 6 Giants, Aliens and Fallen Angels, Angel Wars, everything I have written is to this point where Jesus said, if the days weren't shortened for the elect's sake, there'd be no flesh left alive. And the genetic tampering, the genetic destruction, the designs of the Luciferian globalists to destroy every human being on the planet, to insert their new creation, that we'll call him uh, the Uberman, uh, Nietzsche's statement, the Superman, what is going to be is a super slaughter. And by giving people the correct information, by literally telling them what the end of the book is, how this plays out in history, my goal is to take away all fear and show them that the truth will make them free as long as they abide in the word of the Lord and the word of the Lord abides in them. Too many people are making too many excuses for the living God, and I'm looking for that time when the people of God will stand up, when the people of God will not take a back seat to the skeptic, who's the only agenda he has is what he's being paid to say. We're going to produce, uh, I would say, such a different documentary form and style that I think people will be really excited and especially to get involved with the Senate. In other words, rather than looking for the giants that were, we're looking for the giants that are. Absolutely. And I find it fascinating, just as we're literally in the time of the movie of Noah, which was just a disaster biblically, it wasn't even anywhere near the scripture, but the times of Noah, isn't it interesting? The times of Noah, and now we got all this interest in giants, hello, I don't think God could give a bigger neon sign than if he wrote it in the sky, and I'm not, I'm not taking liberty, but even as everything is lining up, we are in the days of Noah. In the Noah days, there were giants in the land. And now we're having Hollywood just come out with movie after movie after movie, trying to denigrate biblical uh, Moses, it doesn't matter if it's Noah, trying to distort true history so they can insert their own history. For instance, in the movie Noah, this is pretty fascinating, most people don't know this, the fallen angels are the good guys, and Noah's the bad guy. Yeah, they're called the Watchers, aren't they? they yes, they are, they're called the Watchers. So, ladies and gentlemen, I think what we're going to do is be able to give you a compressed, truly a compressed understanding of history that, it, it, when I say mind-blowing, it'll also be heart-freeing. It will help you to understand the headlines, the movies, and the ultimate plan and scheme for your destruction. But the good news is, Jesus said he'd never leave us nor forsake us. And I believe that, Tim, we're at that time in history now. We're in the days of Noah, and everything that preceded Noah building the ark and the judgment of Almighty God on this earth that was in rebellion is about to be relived. 